Hello, my fellow lifeforms, and welcome back, and I hope you're having a wonderful holiday so far. It's starting to get cold over here, and I'm not a fan of the cold. I'm not too happy about it, but we'll be okay. Today, I want to talk with you guys about this. I've been working on this for the past few days now, and I'm finally at the point where I'm ready to show you guys what I've been up to. And this is going to be a visual aid in helping with the understanding of the mathematics behind the Great Pyramid, along with its scaling when it comes to finding the Earth and Moon dimensions. Now, I totally understand that the words I just said might be a leap in logic for some people to take, but I just want you to hear me out because these numbers exist. Regardless of what you believe, what you think is true, these numbers are real. And the mathematics I'm getting ready to show you is only a fraction of the knowledge that's been encoded into the dimensions and measurements of this structure. Now, the measurements for the Great Pyramid come from the surveys done by J.H. Cole in 1925 that was also confirmed by the Egyptian government and is also still used to this day as a standard. And I'll put the link to this PDF in the description down below. Now before we get to the numbers, I gotta point out that the Great Pyramid does not sit directly on the bedrock. It sits on what is called the sockle or paving stones, which raises the entire structure up 55 centimeters or 21.6 inches, giving the final height of the Great Pyramid to 482.8 feet high. Also on each of the corners of the Great Pyramid, there are socket stones adding dimension to its perimeter of about five feet per side. And we do know the original dimensions of the finished Great Pyramid due to the well-preserved casing stones we find on the northern face. Let's go over the Earth's dimensions real quick so you can get those numbers in your head. The equatorial circumference of the planet is 24,901 miles or 40,075.017 kilometers. Its polar diameter is 7,899.8 miles or 12,713.6 kilometers. Its polar radius is 3,950 miles or 6,356.752 kilometers. And the rotation rate of the planet per second on its axis is 1,509 0.16 feet or 460 meters per second. Now when it comes to finding the dimensions of the planet using the Great Pyramid, we have to scale it using the seconds within the day cycle. And you might be saying, well, the Egyptians didn't use a second. Well, my first question is, do you know that? But it doesn't matter because the Great Pyramid defines a second for us. If you were standing at one of the corners of the Great Pyramid, and here let's just say we're using the northeast corner, staring at the structure, the total maximum distance you can see of its base is 1,511.31 feet or 460.64 meters, which is how much the planet rotates in one second. So if the planet were to rotate for two seconds, the total distance it has moved equals the entire perimeter distance of the Great Pyramid. And we do know that the Egyptians had a concept of a 24-hour day from the astronomical ceiling we find in the tomb of Pharaoh Sinanmut. Now, there are 43,200 seconds in 12 hours and 86,400 seconds in 24 hours. Now, let's imagine we could take the Great Pyramid with its corner socket stones and sockle and scale that entire structure up 43,200 times, making a giant pyramid. The perimeter around that giant pyramid is now 24,898.532 miles or 40,069.961 kilometers, which by the way, is extremely close to the equatorial circumference of the planet. And the height of that giant pyramid is now 3,950.1818 miles or 6,356.88 kilometers, which is remarkably close to the polar radius of the planet. Now keep in mind that as the planet travels through space, it's able to shift and twist and bulge itself into different dimensions so that every time we measure it, we could come out with a different outcome, which could also explain the discrepancy in these numbers. Now when it comes to scaling the Great Pyramid using the full day size, Cycle, the total height of that giant pyramid equals the polar radius at 7,900.363 miles or 12,713.76 kilometers, which is unbelievably close to the actual dimensions of the planet. And scaling it at 86,000 means that only two sides of the Great Pyramid gives us the equatorial circumference of the planet at 24,894.163 miles miles or 40,063.075 kilometers. So if we were standing at the corner of the Great Pyramid staring at the structure, the total height we would see along with its base scaled up by 86,400 times gives us the dimensions of the planet. Now, by all means, go check my math. I've been doing this several times now and it works and I can only encourage you to do it for yourself because I don't want you to trust me at all. And I haven't even gotten to the earth and moon ratio yet. I still have a few more things I need to do on that. But before I get to that, 
a quick shout out to my sponsor, The Water Machine. It's the first all glass gravity fed water purifier and it's two carbon filters will filter a gallon of water a day for 10 years. I've been using my water machine for two years now and I absolutely love it. So if you're interested, I'll put a link in the description down below and be sure to use my promo code RIBUS to get 10% off on your order, which will help me out, which will help you out, which will help the world out one drop at a time. So let's just do a quick overview of the Earth-Moon ratio found in the dimensions of the Great Pyramid. Let's imagine we could take the Great Pyramid and scale it up to where the length of its base equaled the polar diameter of the Earth at 12,713.6 kilometers. The height of that giant pyramid, if folded flat, would protrude out from the edge, and the amount that extends from its edge equals 1,737.719, which is the polar radius of the Moon at a remarkable level of accuracy. It also works if we scale the Great Pyramid up to where half of the length of its base equals the polar diameter of the Earth. The amount of its height that would then protrude out from its edge gives us the polar diameter of the Moon being 3,475.599 kilometers with the Moon's actual polar radius being 3,472 kilometers. So these are just a few mathematical facts when it comes to the Great Pyramid that really shouldn't exist if our current models of history are true. Because we are told that it's impossible for ancient people long ago to know the dimensions of the Earth along with the Moon and also encode them mathematically into a structure so all of this just has to be a big old coincidence personally i do not believe that we modern humans are the first ones to discover any of this i believe ancient human beings long ago had the abilities to make these measurements and encode them into their structures preserving that knowledge that was eventually lost and we are only recently rediscovering them so on that note i'm going to end this video right there if you enjoyed it please hit that like button down below and if you're new please subscribe for more content you can also follow me on instagram and TikTok at Phantom Universe. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video and I'll see you next time. Bye.